I randomly saw this pop up on my flipping um Twitter and I wanted to speak about it. It's clear because I think this strikes right at the core of me because I've been through similar, but then I kind of got over it very quickly because I realized it was a dumb way of thinking. So this is courtesy of the Daily Mail and it says shirtless Harry Styles enjoys a boat ride with his Victoria's Secrets pal and lingerie model um, Jacqueline Jablowski and his best friend James Corden. I find it interesting that somebody as cool and safe as fucking Harry Styles is going to be BFFs with someone like a James Corden. It goes to show, really, that you can never take... Um, you always have to kind of have your own experience with people. You can never take somebody's recommendation of how someone is cool or not cool as a representation of who they are because... I've said that in this podcast plenty of times. I've actually met Harry Styles once in the past and I used to go to this club called The Alibi in, you know, in London that was fucking amazing, this little basement bar place. And it was a really cool place to hang out and stuff. And I met a lot of cool people, did some cool parties there, had some cool experiences. And I bumped into him there when he was, I think, going solo, right? And he was in there on his own, just chatting up girls, hanging out, drinking, having a good time. And he legitimately was eager to shake everybody's hand, meet, Koch, be okay, right? He was a cool dude. I fucking loved it. I loved that vibe about him. And the fact that he was kind of just regular. And um, I think after that, when he kind of became a little bit more famous, that was the one thing that I kind of heard on the grapevine, that Harry Styles is generally just a cool and chill dude. But obviously, we've known everything about flipping Harry's, you know, James Corden and the stories about him going to that restaurant and being a bit of a cunt and you know most people myself included would say a good barometer of somebody's ability to be a cunt is how they treat wait staff is how they treat sales assistants how they treat waitresses how they treat receptionists um door guys and stuff it's a really good indication of the levels of cunts of someone that are so in my opinion i think the story we heard about james corden unfortunately it kind of proves that he probably is a bit of a cunt. And then when you went on that, I think around that same time that that stuff was happening, there was threads, I think, on Reddit or I think on Twitter where people were basically sharing stories about meeting him in real life. And again, you can take that stuff with a pinch of salt because some of it may be trolling, some of it may be lies. But I do remember a lot of the accounts basically saying, yeah, he's a bit of a dickhead. So it's, it's funny when that happens. Somebody that genuinely a lot of people have a lot of time for, hanging out a person that some, generally a lot of people don't like, but because they're both kind of famous and got a name, you know, you kind of have to bite your tongue, not say what you really feel. It's a weird place to be in, to be honest. Because I'm sure a lot of Harry Styles friends will be like, hey, how the fuck are you friends with James Corden? Or they particularly just won't like James kind of thing. But he's obviously liking him for whatever reason. So whatever. Um, and I'm sure James is probably one of those people, Corden, who kind of... Um, calibrates his behavior and personality based on who's around which i abhor i hate people who like are only cool to you if they know you are somebody that can help them or somebody of influence or somebody famous i hate that shit where you see them kind of you know they treat you like shit because they think like you don't you're not anybody then as soon as somebody that somebody comes in all of a sudden they've got a smile on their face they're all happy go lucky and shit you're like yeah, bro, I hope you dance in fucking traffic one day. Anyway, all that to say, there's this picture actually of James Corden, the picture of Harry Styles there, looking shirtless and looking absolutely ripped and shit, right? Looking in good shape, being on tour all, all, all this time and running all the time. Obviously, he's putting him in good nick, so big up Harry Styles for looking good. Then there's a picture of James Corden looking like a fat blob that he is on a boat with a black t-shirt on. Now, that made me think about this. When I was at my fattest, right? One thing that you generally tend to do, which is, is a strange thing to kind of get in your head as a fat dude, is that sometimes when you're in a beach or when you go to a swimming pool, you sometimes think putting on a t-shirt, having on a black t-shirt especially, is somehow shielding you away from the prying eyes of people seeing how fucking fat you are. When in actuality, you're actually making it more obvious that you're fat. You're actually making it more obvious that you're uncomfortable in your own skin. When in actuality, if you go to like Mediterranean countries for real, you go to Mediterranean, this is something I've, I realized when I went to Mediterranean countries or just places in Europe overall outside of maybe Britain. I feel like people here are a bit more body conscious and shit and we're maybe a, we have a puritanical Catholic sort of like vibe here where people just are a bit uncomfortable with everything, right? Nudity, vulgarity, drug use, whatever. It's just odd country to live in. But I feel like when you go to Mediterranean countries, what you realize when you go to the beaches, in places like France, Italy, Spain and shit, you see a lot of people of varying body sizes 
just fucking stalkers. Absolutely. Sometimes naked, completely naked, enjoying the fucking weather, soaking in the fucking rays, going in the water for a dip and a refreshment and whatever it may be, right? And they're living their best life. And nobody gives a fuck. Nobody bats an eyelid, especially the nude kind of beaches, quote unquote. Nobody's staring. Nobody's, everyone's just kind of letting everybody do what they're doing. And I feel like for whatever reason, with some other guys, especially when they're fat, they have this idea that putting on a black t-shirt or any t-shirt when you're on a beach or on that pool is kind of giving you an invisibility cloak. When in actuality, it makes you look fatter. That's the real sad part of it. And if anything, going to a beach usually, when I was at my fattest, would be the time when I'd kind of get inspired and motivated to kind of lose some weight and start working out. Because I'd be like, okay, cool, I don't want to feel this odd again. I don't want to feel this uncomfortable. But... This also goes to my normal kind of adage that I've always kind of ascribed by because I've kind of gone through the varying scales. I've gone from weighing 280 pounds to weighing 180 pounds, right? A big 100 fucking pound swing. And I know for me personally, especially somebody that's been into clothes, that I can honestly say, especially somebody that, you know, I've bought everything from like designer clothes to fucking stuff in Primark. I honestly do think most men, most men specifically, their entire lives and wardrobes will be dramatically changed if they can lose between 20 to 50 pounds. 20 to 50 pounds of weight loss will improve your overall posture, your confidence, your vibe, um, you know, the, the aura that you fucking emit, just the way you carry yourself and the options that you have to wear clothes in terms of style than anything else. They'll improve your life way more than wearing a baggy t-shirt, way more than wearing a black t-shirt, way more than wearing baggy clothes, way more than anything else would be just losing 20 to 50 pounds. You wouldn't do this because even this picture, it just screams insecurity. You got the black t-shirt, you got his hands across his fucking chest and shit and his stomach like this guy is not comfortable in the slightest. And it makes sense because you're out on the beach in a boat somewhere with your fucking celebrity friends and you're hanging around this dude right you peer you go around this way you look look to your right and you got fucking harry styles right there like in full fucking topless you know fucking wonderment right with his fucking dick root showing the perfect placement of these little hipster tattoos nice and tanned right looking marvelous and then next to him he's got some fucking bare bottom right very caucasian victoria secrets model who looks like you know, she fucking stepped off of her fucking Olympics fucking podium somewhere. So if you're up James Corden, I can completely understand looking at that thinking, fucking hell, I need to cover up, mate. Where's the black t-shirts at? You know, I could completely get it. But actually, the real strength and confidence, in my opinion, regardless of how big or fat you are, small or skinny, is actually being comfortable in your skin and letting it be. You would be hard pressed to find me at my fattest. I don't give a fuck right if i paid my hard-earned money to go on holiday somewhere sunny right to fucking hire a boat somewhere to pay 500 euros for a bottle of fucking vodka right to be fed 50 dollar fucking overpriced burgers right to be giving everybody tips everywhere you'd be you you got me fucked up if you think i'm gonna go on holiday and wear a t-shirt because i've got man boobs or because my love handles are sticking out or because my belly's too big nah man embrace that shit take off your t-shirt have some fun because honestly i guarantee you most people don't care what most people see when they go to the beach is somebody's fat oh that person's fat in the head you just continue it's like an observation you start seeing somebody on the bike oh there's somebody on the bike you don't think about it any anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't cross your mind anymore. But the thing that sticks in your brain way more is that person that's got a t-shirt on or wearing trousers in a fucking pool or something. You're like, what the fuck is that person doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no one honestly cares. I guarantee you, nobody fucking cares. So if you're fat out there and you're out somewhere on a beach and you've paid your money, you paid your flight, you've gone through that knowing process of having to exchange fucking DLs and go pick up your fucking keys from the Airbnb host, you figured out where to go, you've brought all your gear with you, the thing that you could do to give yourself the maximum benefit, bang for your back on your holiday, take off your t-shirt, let your fucking body be what it is, it is what it is, that's the body you've been given by the gods, by the universe, enjoy it, live with it, if you want to work with it and you want to strip off some of that fat, cool, no problem, but you're doing yourself a real disservice by going to these places and putting on a black t-shirt thinking you've got an invisibility cloak on when actually you've got a fucking massive beacon on your head. When I'm, when I'm, fat shit, fat shit, fat shit, shy, shy, insecure, fat shit, fat shit. That's what's actually going on. That's what's actually going on. You have to just, if when you embrace it, everyone's like, oh, there's that cool guy. There's that guy having a good time. There's that guy who's just confident. That's what actually happens. But, you know, 
again, what do I know? What do I bloody know? I don't know jack shit, but big up Harry Styles regardless. He's a G. Like, I'm one of those people, like, I don't like meeting my heroes. I don't like meeting celebrities. I don't like meeting anybody. I just kind of keep myself to myself, as you can see, via this fucking illustrious pod, right? 600 plus episodes in. I'm just here ranting into the fucking universe, right? <laughs> Whatever. So clearly, I'm not that guy, right? That's going to be doing that. And it, when I have done it, it's gone fucking disastrously wrong. And I'll be like, fuck, man, never doing that again. So when I do meet people who are somewhat famous, right? And they're nice. You know what it does to me? It makes me a fan of yours for life. Like, honestly, Harry Styles could drop the hard nigger with a hard R, right? He could be on stage going, nigger, 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 nigger. And I won't give a fuck. He's my boy forever. Because he gave me the courtesy of a 30-second conversation in, like, 2010, <laughs> right? <laughs> in 2010, he gave me a courtesy of a 30-second conversation. And I fucking remember that forever. He's my boy because of that. That's all it takes. That's the funny thing about it. These celebrities that they don't understand. All it takes for you to actually get a fan for life is just that brief interaction where you actually make somebody feel like they've been seen. Like, you just, hey, well, go on, man. What's up? Hey, man, f f thanks for support. Because honestly, that's all he did. And I left him to kind of, you know, because Harry at that time, when I saw him at that bar, he was surrounded. I've never seen a guy be surrounded by women. I don't know if that's the thing that you've seen out when you've been out, guys. And maybe you go out to cooler places than I do. I've never seen a man, a boy be surrounded by fucking women. It was almost like mesmerizing to see that. Like, wow, that's what it's like to be like good looking and to be insanely fucking famous. He was just like surrounded by them and they were all fighting for his attention. And he was just being so charming and a gentleman, showing everyone a good time, getting shots for everybody. I was like, God damn it. And then here I come. Um, hello, Harry. Harry, it's me, Agostino. I came out red in my little fucking Supreme T-shirt on. Hello, um, so I I DJ here too sometimes, and um, I just wanted to say um, I, I'm a big fan. He's like, yeah, thanks, man, thanks, thanks for love. Like that was it. He said like five words to me in total. Five words, five words, and I'm a fan of fucking Harry Styles for life. He can say nigger with a hard R, and I'm gonna fucking back that boy. I'm going to fucking ride for him. I'm going to say free Harry Styles. That's my guy. You know what I mean? That's all it takes. That's all it takes to be my guy. Just say, just be okay. Don't be like fucking, what's her name? Don't be like, oh, no, actually, don't be okay. Don't be like, uh, what's, yeah, that's her name. The DJ, fucking Juliana Huxtable. I, I went to Bergheim. I was there, sorry, it's the best. I was in Bergheim. I went to fucking Panorama Bar. She had, I think she just finished playing. I don't know where, where she was playing. Panama Bar Burger and don't, don't mistake me. But I remember I went there and she was on a dance floor with her friends dancing. And I had a good time. I enjoyed the set. I, I might have been a bit drunk. I might have been a bit high. Who knows what was going on? And I just saw her. I was like, oh my God, man, that's good. So I just went like in my eager, happy, like, oh my God, euphoric sort of smile. Like, oh, I love your set. And I kind of reached out to say, oh my God, love your set. Put my hand out this to shake her hand. And when she turned around and looked at me, it was almost as if, like, she saw, like, it's almost as if she saw, like, the guy that stole her bike when she was, like, 10, right? Or, <laughs> or, um, or some guy at work she always thought was annoying. You know, that kind of contempt, like, ugh. Like, not even, like, like, scare, like, fear, just more so, like, like, and I, and I didn't even, I didn't even touch her. I just, I just, like, put my hand out saying, like, hey. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's up, man? And Gina Huxable looked to me as if, like, I was literally chewing up on the bottom of her shoe. And I was like, oh, yeah, thank you. Like, it was a bit like, oh, thanks, sir. You know? Well, you know when someone says thanks? You know someone talks to you, like, with their teeth clenched? Oh, thank you. I was like, oh, my God. I just, like, literally kind of moonwalked back. Like, sort of, you know, like, that, that, that film scene of fucking Homer, um, Homer Simpson walking back into the bush, right? I started to lean back. I was like, oh, my God. How embarrassing. And again, that was the same time of interaction. Probably no more than like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And I instantly was like, shit, that's not a person you should probably meet in real life. You should probably like keep that relationship or keep that, sorry, keep that admiration of that fucking DJ to like double tapping the mixes or whatever it may be. That's all you meant to do. Because that during Huxley interaction. And again, this is what I've always said about DJs I find really interesting, right? 
Harry Styles is like way big of a celebrity or famous, you know, regarded like, to, especially with normies and Julian Huxley boys, right? This is a very niche person in a very niche scene. It's like a scene within a scene within a scene. But obviously very popular within a scene. But I've always done, it's always perplexed me why, for some reason, right, the more niche the DJ is, the more fucking <laughs> against they are, like that communication, they don't want to talk to you, you know what I mean? It's a bit of a, I won't say rudeness, but it's a bit of an affront there. Whereas Harry Styles probably gets annoyed Harry, Harry Styles probably gets bothered like a hundred times a day and I'm sure there are some times where he comes off a bit of a cunt but for the majority of the time he's always like you take a picture you'll say hi he'll make you feel seen you'll take your shitty fucking card you made from him bin it later but whatever there'll be that kind of you'll feel like seen in that kind of interaction whereas these DJs you see them and they like they look at you as if like how dare you how dare you speak to me who are you and you're like, bruh, like, I came here to hear you fucking play. I'm a fucking fan. The fact that I even know who you are should be enough indication that, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Long live Harry Styles. Harry Styles forever. No one's ever going to say anything bad about Harry Styles to me. And like I said, if Harry Styles decides to, you know, to drop a big old hard R, I'm here to defend him. Don't give a flying fuck. I'm here to defend my boy because Harry Styles is a fucking G. Moving on from that one, moving on from that one, let's say this. So, uh, duh, 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 what are people saying in the chat here? Blah, blah, blah. Dan Dutton says, damn upsetting to hear about Julian Huxley boys like that. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to put any like false fucking narratives out there. That could just be a, per like, I'm very aware that I cannot control how I come across. In my head, I might have come across like, oh, I was just saying hi. I was just excited to see her. But in her head, she could have just seen a fucking monster, right? Here's this six foot black dude sweating, <laughs> right? Jaw swinging, pixels dilated, just ah, coming at her. I can understand how, on her point of view, maybe it didn't come across how I'm saying in my head. So don't view it as like an, in, you know, it's not an, it's not an indictment of her as a person. It's just in that situation, I was like, in that scenario, sorry. I was like, oh my God. I feel like, I felt like so tiny. You know what I mean? I was like, shit, man. I knew I shouldn't, because I doubted actually going across to her, but I was just in the vibe of like, oh my God, I enjoyed that set. That was so cool. The DJ that I saw play was right here. I went over and just like put my hand out and it just like, it was not reciprocated. I was like, damn it, man. But anyway, you know, these things happen. What can you do?